Hi there, welcome back. My name is Wayne Metter, and I just wanted to briefly talk about reed beds and gray water filtration systems. We've always had this gray water pipe uh, that handles everything but the kitchen sink and the toilets. Um, but this gray water pipe comes out here and dumps out in the woods, and it's wasted water, and I don't like that. So I decided, well, why don't we take a look at uh, building a gray water system? I did a little bit of research and decided to end up with this type of a gray water system. It's going to be a reed bed, um, and the purpose is, is that there won't be standing water, so we won't have to deal with mosquitoes. Um, we're also not dealing with or allowing anything to evaporate very quickly. Our goal is that we're simply allowing the plants in these two reed beds to filter the water before it goes down into the wicking gardens. If you haven't watched the how to build the wicking gardens, um, please, the kiddie pool wicking gardens, please go and take a look at that video. There's references, any kind of thing that I've referenced here will be linked to in the description below the video. So make sure you check that out. It's also on the video cards up here in the top and it's annotated in the video. So let's talk about the reed bed construction just a bit. It's very simply constructed. It's a, a single 55 gallon barrel that I've cut. I cut it right down the middle of the ribs. So when you see the ribs um, that are, are, are horizontal, on the, the barrel, I cut them. Uh, so I was left with this strip that was approximately this wide and uh, the, the round section of the barrel. And I've used this strip and cut it down to make the baffles. Now these baffles are simply to force the water down and under the baffle and back up before it exits out this side of the first bed and before it exits out this side of bed number two. I've left the rocks out because that's gonna be in part two. We're gonna talk about planting the reed bed. We're gonna get it activated and start to run water through it. And we're gonna see what it looks like when the water exits the reed bed and exits into the uh, uh, wicking bed. Now I'm gonna plant a second wicking bed here. So once this line is removed, the second wicking bed can be in place and everything can be activated. And we'll be able to see this whole system work in unison together. Let's talk a little bit more about the construction. Uh, I used the orange that you see here uh, is, is made simply from the ladder rails that I've been using for a lot of my projects. It's fiberglass ladder rails. Um, the silicon that we used for sealing everything is 100% silicon, so it's food safe for any of your food products that might be downstream from the silicon. And this T, uh, siphon it's not really a tea siphon what it is is it's a tea that allows water to come up through and drain into bed number two but it also gives us the ability to take this cap off here and get visibility down inside and see if there's any plugs or clogs and clear out any drainage the goal here is that there's no standing water uh, standing water causes a stagnant uh, mosquito bed and we really don't want that to happen. So the plants we'll be using will be able to grow down into the rock and, um, in, and, and soak up those nutrients. Uh, in part number two, we'll take care of all the planting and activating, but before we do, I wanna know from you what plants you'd recommend putting in these two reed beds. Uh, obviously, it'll be a little more harsher chemicals at the front than on the back side. Um, and if I can, I'd like to put a carbon filter, a charcoal filter in this tea and also in this tea before the water exits but what kind of plants would you recommend I mean the, the goal here is to make this a much cleaner water um, to be able to eat from it thank you all so much for being here and for encouraging me along the way there'll be more to come soon in part deuce